is showtime again. Welcome everyone to Niche to Profit. I am your, thank you, I think. <laughs> I am your uh, hostess with the most is here, Danny Ackman, the Danny App. And as you can see, we got stuff on the desk again. I was told, bring in the stuff. You need stuff. So I brought stuff. Now, let me tell you, makeup and hair, threw it out the window because by the time I got here, I, what is it, like 110, 111, you know, it's all good though, right? Right. I, yeah. And and I could not, I, I find it in me to drag a, a guest into this hot studio today. So I've got someone coming to us special from, get this, New York City. I've just always, yeah. I want to. I want to see the whole chat say New York City. I don't know. Stupid, right? All right. Great advertising, though, because we have still just not forgotten that. Hey, so my guest, who I hear kind of giggling in the background, is uh, someone I met recently at an event I attended. And uh, what made her stand out to me was that her brand is all about bull. Now, those of you know my brand is Utterly Good Stuff and is all about the cow. So, I don't know. It was just a, this attraction and uh, started talking to Heather Markell and found that she is a fascinating person on top of having a really cool brand. Uh, and so, I thought, you got to come on my show and talk about how do we bust the bull? Because we all need to bust some bull, right? And uh, so, Heather... Welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. So I have to know, how did the whole branding with the Bust Your Bull kind of thing come about for you? Wow. Uh, it all started a few years ago when I was actually in a relationship that was not the right size for me, not the right fit. And I had a really tough time deciding whether to stay or go. And when I finally decided to leave the relationship, I realized that what had kept me stuck were all the years of crazy thinking in my mind uh, that, I, you know, what I call the BS or the bull <laughs> um, that just left me stuck in indecision. And it was a very painful time. And um, I actually herniated two discs in my neck, among other things. So real Yeesh. pain. <laughs> it was fun. Um, and I just came out of it and realized, like, if I could make other people not go through that pain, um, in their lives and their businesses, that that was something that uh, was a real anchoring point for me to start it. Oh, that's, I mean, that's awesome. It, it's great when you can find kind of that place you're in and recognize it and then not have to do it anymore, figure it yeah. out, and then go and teach other people the same stuff. That's really, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So uh, you have like 20 years experience back in corporate sales and marketing and, and all that. How did you bust out of corporate? <laughs> um, you know, it's it's uh, it's tough, right? There's a lot of bull there um, that you have to. Um, it, it's basically applying my own concepts of um, all the things. What you know? What is it? What is it that keeps us attracted to anything, right? Um, whether it's a relationship, whether it's a job, all those kinds of things, and um, getting really deep with the fear and figuring out what's the attachment and how do you how do you either break the attachment or replace one thing with another thing, right? If it's money, where can I get money somewhere else um, and feel good about that? Or what other, um, if I want a bigger, you know, if I have a big apartment, maybe it's getting a smaller apartment, all that kind of thing. So um, just again, a lot of, I think, I think you have to have a taste in you <laughs> of what uh, your clients go through to be able, you have to bust your own bowl to be able to help other people bust theirs. Absolutely. I, so, I mean, I deal with a lot of eBay sellers and I hear, and they hate when I say this, I hear a lot of excuses. Um, and so <laughs> tell me your take on excuses. Um, excuses, I guess in my par in my mindset, they are, um, it's all filled with fear, right? So mm -hmm. for example, one I hear a lot is how about making phone calls? for, for uh, selling to people and excuses. Well, it's really intrusive. People don't like being sold to. Um, and that's, that's all like, well, what's, what's really the fear is, is the worst thing that could happen if you call someone is what, that they hang up on you, that they call you a jerk, that they, that they're mad at you for ruining their day. I mean, so what? So at the end of the day, I think it's just, um, all the things, excuses are really about, 
uh, making yourself feel better about not taking an action that you're afraid to take. Oh, that's a really good way to put it. Yeah, because we do. We justify it. And now in the world of Facebook, we can go out there and we can find like a hundred other people to go, yeah, you're right. I feel the same way. And then it all feels really good. Exactly. Oh my God. Yes. And and I think we do. We naturally look for the people that we can say, you know, this was, I was a victim of this experience and, and other people say, oh, poor you. That's horrible. Right. And, and we look for those people that will listen to us drone on and on and on so that we can stay there and we get angry, right. At the person that says, well, Heather, if you don't want to do that anymore, why don't you just not, right? <laughs> I mean, that's just too scary. And then, you know, but when you're ready to hear that message, when you're done being stuck, you say, yeah, yeah, why don't I just get out of this? And why don't I just, you know, pick up the phone or walk out the door or whatever it is that you need to do? Or raise your prices, guys. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my God. Raise your prices. <laughs> oh, that's like my favorite. Yeah. That. Ching. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a big one. And, and really, and I'm not trying to minimize the fear here, but it's that same thing. Like, but it's like, if I raise my prices, this will happen. And it's just you know, looking at it that way of, yeah, for me, it's like, yeah, you could sell it at that price, you know? You know, it's funny because I've raised my prices um, several times. And each time I do, I'm like, good for me. I value myself that much more. I know how good a job I can do for my clients. And I know I'm worth this. And and it and I can feel that when I when I state my prices, I'm in full confidence. And I'm I have, you know. I don't charge a million dollars, but I would have no problem saying I cost a million dollars. Hey, then so. you only need like one or two clients. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Or a half a client. Hey, exactly. You know. Right. <laughs> then I could, then I, yeah, then we'd be with in Miami with the Cabana boys. So, there yeah. we go. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I totally agree though. I mean, fear is like that paralyzing thing. You have, you had a, a quote on your website that I've loved. Oh. Okay. Um, and I just wanted to talk about this is you talk about, um, step out of our gray lives and into the color of possibility. Yeah. Tell me about that. When I was actually first um, figuring out what to call this thing that I do, um, I just had this vision of how, um, you know, at, at the time myself and how a lot of us walk around in our lives, like we're, we're in black and white. And I kind of just had this picture of us like hunched over in like the white gown and just really downtrodden. And then when we're really in the joyful, passionate, true connection to ourselves, it's like someone flipped on the color and, you know, it's a whole other life experience. Um, and that was like at a deeper level, what I do, what I really want to do with my clients is reconnect them to who they are at heart and bring that into their business and their lives. And for me, that's really just like, you know, just put the sizzle in and just like shake up your life and shake up everything in color. So is there like something, like, what is like something that you can give somebody like immediate results? Like you could tell my audience right now, like one little thing they could even do like right now today. Wow. Um, in terms of um, anything business life? I'm just starting to, you know, let, well, we'll talk business because these are all business folks here. Um, yep. Yeah. Um. You know, I think, uh, let's see, in terms, we were talking about pricing earlier. One thing I ask um, when I have a workshop, I often ask my uh, participants to think about if you were going to spend a day with Tony Robbins or Oprah Winfrey, how much do you think, you, how much would you be willing to pay to spend that day with them? Um, and, you know, usually people are talking like hundreds of thousands of dollars or a million dollars, whatever it is. And then I asked them to think about why. Why would you pay that person? Why would you put down $100,000 to spend like an hour or a day with one of these people? And within the answer, which might be, well, they have all this experience or, um, you know, I, they, they walk on, they, they make people walk on coals, you know, whatever. Um, within the answer, I think, is something for you to work on, to step into your own confidence and self-worth for yourself. Um, so if you think that... Uh, basically having experience and confidence in what you do is what makes you worth a lot of money. Step into your own experience and your own worth when you step out into the world and tell them what you do and how much you charge. Yeah. And so, and so bringing that back to like a product based business. Uh, so that same confidence follows through in your brand and your marketing and all of that as well. So it's not just if you're doing a service-based business. 
You know, and it's funny you say that. So absolutely. And with products, um, I think it's the tie-in. I mean, I think it's the same thing about, you know, do you talk about features or do you think about benefits? Um, because um, if you, like I always use a gym trainer example. If I say, Danny, um, you need to work with me. I'm a great trainer. Come over. Um, you'll come over to me uh, for 10 one-hour sessions. And when you get here, I'm going to give you a 10 pound weight in each hand and <laughs> for an hour. I'm going to make you lift those weights up over your head and back down and up over your head and back down with some squats thrown in, in between 10 hours, 10 times. Want to do it? You're going to be like, no, no. <laughs> but if I say, Danny, come spend 10 one hour sessions with me because at the end of those 10 hours, let me tell you, typically my clients lose, they drop two dress sizes. You're going to, I heard you complaining about your wardrobe, which is great. You're going to have to buy a new one because the one you have now isn't going to fit anymore. And I know you've been looking for that special someone and they are just going to line up at the door. You're going to have a hard time fending them off if it weren't actually for the new muscles you're going to have. So, you know, do you want to work with me? Yeah. See, it's all about emotion. It's all yeah. about emotion for people. Hey, Heather, we're going to take a quick break and come back and talk some more about busting some bull. Great. Millions of online sellers are looking for one identity to use in thousands of platforms. E-Rated manages your reputation by importing unlimited social media, marketplace, and behavioral data. It reveals your cross-platform performance, compares it with competitors, and calculates your e-worth. And it gives you the tools you need to improve sales and find room to grow. Discover your e-worth and your own reputation <laughs> ShareYourReputation.com. Go get your free account. Go sign up. Hurry up. Go over there. Well, not right now. Finish the show first. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you too. You should be on there too. Um, okay. So let's uh, let's talk a little more about busting the bull because I I really feel like this gets down to the meat and potatoes of why some people are super duper successful and get stuff done and are selling thousands and thousands of stuff on eBay and then there's those who aren't. Um it's it really comes down to you have a you have a special word. I know we call it but I I'm just trying to think of like bull something. Cause I don't know. <laughs> oh. Bull, I'm bull sure you I, you have a word. I know you do. I don't know. I don't know which word you're thinking of though. I, I'm not. I'm just oh. there's a word there. I just you know it's that little marketing thing. I mean that there's that there's a word there. We have we have to think about that word. Okay. So, well, anything that we're, that ends in like able or able, you know, I made buttons out of it. So it's all like irreplaceable. And, you know, I had a whole thing going oh. with plan work. It was fun. I'm oh. marketable, you know. I'm looking at your site right now. You're don't be bullheaded. Okay. <laughs> oh, tell me about Heatherisms. Oh, God. Every once in a while, I just, um, I spit out some like, like life happens and I just notice something and it cracks me up and like doesn't crack up, really doesn't crack anybody else up usually. Well, sometimes it does. And I'm just like, okay, it's a Heatherism. Heather got it. You might not. <laughs> Whatever. So, you know, things like how time doesn't really exist. Um, and I'll sit here and convince you about that. And, you know, I don't know, whatever it is on a whim. Okay, I like this one. I need to go to Europe once a month so I can get jet lag, which will let me accomplish stuff in the morning rather than sleep. <laughs> yeah, it works like a charm. I get to the supermarket at like 6 a.m. when it first opens and nobody's there. It's glorious. Yeah, so so, so are you a morning or night person? Oh, night. <laughs> night, okay, so you don't do mornings? No, don't do mornings. So is that one of those things? I know there's a lot of people out there that I talk to. It's like... Well, I just can't seem to get anything done and I'm tired and I have to get up at six o'clock in the morning. What would you say to them? I'd say you don't have to do anything, actually, except what you want to do. So maybe you should look at what you've chosen to do at six in the morning, what obligation, what choices you've made and see what you can shift. Oh, I like it. I like it. Because I, and what I was getting to in that is that sometimes we'll say things like that or we put things in our path that are those can we just, we're just going to say, you guys can bleep if you want. It's bullshit. Okay. I know you like this word. You said it. Oh, we cannot skirt around that word. No. Oh, thank you, cow. Thank you. Oh, yes. We have a cow in the studio. That's awesome. That's Bessie. Oh, I just gave her a name. That's Bessie over there. Yeah. Bessie. No, no. Yeah. 
But really, it's it's true. And I am guilty of this as much. I'm not calling anybody out because except, you know, here, right here, I'm pointing a finger at me because we all do this. We all do this. So you you work with people and you you have a special way that you get through these these bullshits. <laughs> yes. And so tell us more about how you actually, how do you bust those? Because they become habit and the older you are, the longer you've had them. So how do we get rid of them? Yeah, well, um, so my process is kind of weird and unique, I guess. Like when I work with a client, I actually, in addition to everything else, I kind of delve into their energy because at an energetic level, you got going on what you got going on. Um, and I find a lot of the time when I approach energetically what someone's going through, like you can't say, no, I'm not. <laughs> You can't deny it. So, um, so I start there and then, um, you know, one of the biggest bulls that my clients tend to have is the money bull, whether it be about, you know, raising prices or, um, how much they're charging for a product, whatever it is. Um, so, or asking for money, asking for business, those kinds of things. I actually playfully represent fear with bulls, right? So I've got a money bull, I've got a fear bull, a great designer. Um, if you go to the very bottom of my homepage on my website, um, you'll see part of my fear-based herd. Um, and so I, I kind of have, in a playful way, I present those to my clients and I give them bull sheets. And I'm like, take the money bull sheet and let's write down what's going on here. What are you afraid of? And let's go delve into that and tackle it and come up with an action that can replace the fear that you have going on. Can you give like a real life example? Like pretend I'm your client right now. Okay. And I'm telling you, oh, you know what? I just don't, I don't have enough time to get my stuff done. Uh, She's well, laughing at I, me. Oh, time is bullshit. Sorry. But it's like, I mean, time, excuse me. I, I said it. I didn't ask for permission. It's okay. Um, it's all good. So, um, um, so time is, first off, time doesn't really exist. And we fill our day. Like we, we know every, every moment time is just priorities, right? And you choose what's Ooh, important to you. So good. if you're going to tell me that you don't have time to go to dinner tonight, it's because you've chosen to do something else and that's fine. But don't tell me you don't have time. Tell me that, you know, you decided it was more important to write to watch a rerun of Desperate Housewives. And let's be honest. That was good. Time is priority. Oh, that was it. That was a zinger right there. <laughs> Ooh. Did, did everybody is everybody like following along in chat? Are you guys kind of sharing your bulls? Oh, I like that one. OK, yeah, you're right, because we all we all have that same 24 hours in a day. Yeah, everybody. All right, it doesn't matter if you're rich, poor, ugly. Yeah, I, you got 24 hours in a day, but that some people just make more of that. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. Let me think. Let me think another. I think huh. with with products too, you probably make more of it. Yeah. Well, but but Heather, I'm just I am just too tired. I'm too tired, and I've got this sore back, and I you know, it's just too hard. Well, that sounds lame. Um, it's, it sounds to me like you're probably choosing to do things you actually don't want to do and you're saying yes to things you really want to say no to and that's causing fatigue in you and it does, right? Yeah. Whenever we show up, I, I open up the call saying I was saying yes to a relationship for a long time that I needed to say no to. I was exhausted. I put on, I raised two or three dress sizes. I herniated discs because I chose to say yes, right? And And I was... I literally hurt myself doing that. So what are you saying yes to that you need to say no to? Oh, see why I love this girl? <laughs> so good. There's no bull about her. So how about, we'll bring it back to business here. Mm -hmm. How about if somebody's trying to get out of like a corporate job gig into working for themselves, but they just can't seem to make that decision? It's funny. I had a client who... Um, uh, when we first started working together, she had one client and um, was trying to get out of a semi-corporate kind of thing. Um, and, you know, for her, it was about, well, how am I going to get this income, which I've been working. She, my God, if anyone worked hard, there was no one that worked harder than her. Um, she was just working in the wrong, on the wrong things at the wrong time. So we kind of realigned her strategy so that, you know, after several months working together, she went up to nine clients um, and she now has a nice curve of additional people that will come in and work with her. So, you know, if, if it's about revenue, how do you, um, how do you create that revenue? 
Um, maybe you have to make a plan where how much money do you want? Maybe you put money into savings. Um, so it's really, I think there's many facets to that decision um, and each person's an individual. So again, it's about what are you attached to um, within the corporate gig that you either need to replace or in fact, maybe you let go of it, right? Maybe you actually, turns out you don't want or need it. Um, and then you find that out by, you know, I guess take either take a leap of faith or try to be without it. Um, most people I find that when you think that you need lots and lots of money, but you spend a period of time without it, it turns out you're really resourceful in ways that are really surprising. Yeah. And I just want to say, you know, we're not, we're not saying that this stuff is easy, you guys. And I think that's kind of a, uh, that, what's that word I'm looking for? That thing that everybody thinks like, well, when it comes easy, then I'll do it kind of thing. But this is hard. This is why not everybody is a millionaire because this is hard work. It's hard to set big goals and then get them, but it's, it's so rewarding. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's really important because, um, you know, a lot of what I deal with is actually real, real fear and real, there are moments Mm -hmm. with my clients where they hit a wall and they had a really bad week and they wonder like, should I be doing this? Don't, I mean, I think we all do. Um, so you know, and it's, and it's like, I'm, I try to get in there with them. In fact, I had a client recently that had a really, really crappy week and she tried to cancel our session. And I said, no, 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 this is when we have the best session ever. Cause you come full out with what's going wrong so that we can put you back on path. Um, and yeah. we had a great session. Yeah. Awesome. You just, I mean, obviously we can't get to everything on our, our short uh, time together here. Um, you have something over in your website that I just love. You have a little quiz. Um, yeah which is will make it very very uh, personalized each person that goes over there and sees what what bull is busting your business. And this is a great quiz you guys. I really want to encourage you to go over and her website is the bull no, it's bull say it's it bust, again. Bust www.bustbustyourbull.com. Bust your yeah, yeah, redirected. I'm looking at the thing. No, yeah. it's bustyourbull.com. Yeah. Bust your bull. Bust your yeah. bull. <laughs> I just like I just like the name. It's so creative. <laughs> bust your bull. That's I like yeah. it. I like it. Yeah. Thank you. So what's one what's one last takeaway uh, we could get out there um, to help people improve their life, their businesses? Just give me another zing. I've been told we need to bring in the zing bot, you know, here. For oh, this. my God. Um, zing. Um, well, like I said, I, I mean, remember also that you are the master. And we talked about time. You're the master of your schedule. Um, one of the things I advise people is, you know, if you're not using an online uh, tool to basically monitor, you know, manage your time, highly recommend it. But besides that, um, if, when you're working with clients, um, you know, right away set expectations of your time so that you're not working 24-7 or taking a phone call all the time, like in the middle of your sleep, right? Set expectations, figure out how you want to work and make sure that when, you know, you're honest with people when you start working with them about how that's going to look so that you're all on the same page. And also prioritize the friends and family that you cannot live without. And if the only way to see them is to book them into your calendar, then do that every do week it. so that you don't lose touch with those people. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, that's a really good one. Because I just I just lost a dear friend last week who I was always going to get around to calling her. I never got to make that last call. So that's huge. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Ah, Heather, thank you so much for being thank here. You. This has thank been awesome. Having- and uh, I get to see Heather next week uh, when I take a little trip to Miami. So can't wait. We're going to go thank sit you. on the beach with some Cabana yeah. Boys, some fruity awesome. Mai Tai type drinks and have some fun. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. Take care. All right. One quick commercial break and we'll be back to see why stuff won't buy. I'm Danny Ackerman of the dannyapp.com. And what I do is inspire, motivate, and empower online sellers to grow a six-figure business. I have been doing the coaching side of my business for three years, and I have been an online seller for, oh my goodness, this is my 17th year. We have uh, group coaching programs, we have private coaching programs. Uh, I do in-person live events all around the country. I do a large three-day event here in Las Vegas called More Fun, Bigger Profits. And it's all about helping people build a plan, taking action, and reaching their goals in their online business. You can come find out more about me at thedannyapp.com. 
Okay, like, did anybody catch my grammar there? That was really dumb. <laughs> why Why stuff won't buy? Yeah. <laughs> See, I catch these things. I, I just talk faster than my brain will let me correct them. It's all good, right? Okay. Why won't they buy? Which should be what I was going to say here. Uh, so we pick these things over on the Danny App Facebook group. If you're not over there, go ahead over there. It's a fun group. And so I picked a few things that people submitted and try to figure out why the heck they are not selling. And we talked last week how it's not about they aren't selling because stuff doesn't sell itself. It's like, why isn't somebody buying this? So our first one is this really cute framed needlepoint penguins, butlers, servers, footmen. Uh, it is item number. Let me make sure for those that are just listening along. 28136561584. One, three. This is from Nancy Gordon. Nancy, are you in our chat today? Say a hello if you are. Okay, this is really adorable. It is, it's got eye appeal. It's just super cute. Um, what I see as the initial issue here is if I see this title, well, number one, if I was searching for just a penguin, this is not going to come up. And this is some crazy, goofy thing that the new search algorithm does is it used to be if you were looking for penguins and typed in penguin, it would all come up. It would. It, no, not anymore. If, if you type in penguin, you're not going to get this. If you type in penguins, you'll get this. So that could be a little something you want to add into item specifics. Um, put the singular in there. But really, the first thing that I want to see in this title is uh, Penguin Butlers. These are Penguin Butlers. Um, and it is it is art. It is a completed needlepoint. What I would take out of this title is the handcrafted 12 by 12 um, and initialed. Those can go down in your item specifics. Putting them in the item specifics means that if somebody types those words in, the item will still come up. But really be thinking about if somebody is looking for a super cute penguin, something, and they're probably not looking for a penguin needlepoint, by the way. They're looking for a penguin picture, penguin wall art type stuff. That's if somebody was specifically looking for that. But they're really probably just putting in penguins because they love penguins. So you want to come up as quick in search as possible by really thinking like that uh, buyer. Now I, I I'm looking at this and thinking like Downton Abbey. Is that is that really bad? I'm just okay. So I I am a Downton Abbey freak, you guys. I found this and I got all giddy. It's a 2015 calendar, so I still got you know five six months to use it. Five or six months. Oh, God, math again. Um, I'm just giddy as could be. I got to put that in my cart. So, and people are thinking about Downton Abbey. I'm just saying, might be a little marketing reference as you put it. This one out on Facebook on your page or something. Go, hey, does this remind you of any of the characters from Downton Abbey? Just saying. All you need is one penguin lover. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think your price is good. You've got best offer and free shipping. It's just a matter of it now. If this has been listed a long time, end it, sell similar, change that title around so that anybody who's doing a saved search for, um, I don't know, does anybody look for, for butler penguins? Maybe, um, but penguins especially. And I would put wall hanging in there, I think. Yeah, because see, it's ready to go on the wall. I'd go wall hanging on this one for sure. But And uh, hopefully that will get that one to the right buyer. Okay. Next we have, and this is from uh, Lorca Friedman. This is item number. Oh, one of these days you guys are so going to see me wear glasses. I'm just saying. I still have long arms though. Three nine one one eight one eight five six nine seven eight. See, I can read it. This is a Walter Margaret Keen alone is the title of the print. The Big Eyes Kids from the 1960s Lithograph Print Plus Bonus. A lot of stuff in that title. Again, I, I'm telling you, usually these things are going to be title related, you guys. If you can just really, really get over that discomfort 
of taking words out of the title. And this is this is harder for those of you who have been selling, you know, for for more than five years, uh, because it was always about putting every single keyword in the title. We were just that was driven home. It's we have got to put all these keywords in the title and it has gone the complete opposite, complete opposite over the last two years. Um, and this is not just eBay. This is Google. This is when you're searching on Amazon. Everything comes down to predicting buyer behavior, meaning what is the searcher putting in that search box so that they can bring up the most relevant results, which equals into a higher conversion. And if it's eBay, that conversion means at least clicking over and looking at the listing Best case scenario, buying. So you really want to be as close to what that buyer is going to be typing in there as possible. So now I'm seeing this is a little confusing. So I, I pulled up the, the one shot here. This is a Walter Keene. And the first words in the title say Walter Margaret Keene. It's confusing the buyers because if somebody is looking for Walter Keene, guess what they're typing in? They're typing in Walter Keene. So you want to have Walter Keen. Um, I would take the quotations off of the alone. Search engines don't see punctuation marks. So um, get rid of those quotation marks. Um, big eyes. You might want to do a little research. Are people putting big eyes or big eyed? Could go either way. Go and see what they're putting in. I would um, lithograph is one of those... I, are people searching by lithograph? Probably not, but still go put it into the item specifics. And and I don't know what the bonus print thing means. I don't know what that means uh, if I'm looking at this, and I probably um, would be confused by that. Uh, so I'd take that out. You've got um, you've got some some busy stuff going on here because this coding. If you've ever gone and looked at the actual code behind one of these listings and number one it'll scare the heck out of you but just remember uh, anytime you put a widget or any moving parts or flash or any of this stuff above your description the likelihood of a search engine digging any further down is going to be like non-existent so be real careful of that and it looks like this is done on some sort of a um, a template that is not responsive. And responsive means that I have my screen kind of tightened up and, and a responsive website or web page is going to adjust to that screen size. And that's super important for Google right now, by the way. So it's very likely that this is not getting any exposure because of a couple of just these little coding issues. So if you have all of your uh, listings with the same template, that could definitely be hurting things because anybody looking on a mobile phone, they'd have to do a lot of scrolling and looking. They're not going to, they're not going to, they are not going to spend the time. People are, let's just say it, they are lazy now. Um, so you really want to make sure that you are making it as easy as possible for people to come in and buy your stuff. Um, I'd do free shipping on this. I really would. I mean, that it's, it's not so crazy high on shipping that you can't bury that up into the price. So make it $99.95 and put free shipping and make offer. Make offer super important. And again, and if, if this has been listed for a long time, and long time I mean like over six months, end it, sell similar. I don't know if you're running a markdown on um, for a limited time, 8%. I don't know about you guys, but, well, I do kind of know about you guys, just saying. When you go to a store and you walk in and you see a sign that says 10% off, does it really motivate you? I mean, is it, does it take you off course to go and check out, right? Probably not so much. So think about what that percent is that gets you excited. Uh, me personally, it's got to be at least 25% to really, well, number one, 25, I can do the math really easy, divided by four, duh, 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 I can figure out what that is. Anything I have to do a lot of math, I'm not going to do. 8% is actually 
a turnoff to a lot of buyers because it's not an easy number to compute and see what is the like real savings, even though they put it there. Um, just So make it again, make it easy. And don't you guys don't go, don't go first to discounting your prices. I am telling you, do not train the consumers that your stuff's going to get cheapened. Okay. It's like, if it works in a strategy, you do it a few times a year. Your customers can get excited about coming in for your sale. That's when a markdown works really good. Or have a special category for markdowns. I have one called special values. I put that one on sale all the time because that's the purpose of it is to clear that stuff out. But don't cheapen everything you sell with a markdown all the time. Okay, because then then you become like Kohl's where there's no urgency to go in there and buy anything because, you know, something's always going to be on sale. It's like there's always a sale in Kohl's and there's other places like that, too. So it was a good thing that was kind of overused. So be really, really strategic about when you mark down prices. If anything, mark them up, mark them up. And we're going to talk about one of those in just a second. All right. I think we got time. One more. Let's see. This is a vintage sewing notions, wood spools, needle case. I bet you guys in the chat by now are going to be able to figure out what I'm going to say about that title, right? Um, this is item number. Oh, why do nines and sixes all run together when you can't see? 1916-1647-8145. Hey, I did it. All right. This is from Gail. Gail Rosenke. All right. So, this is something when you have a large amount of things in a lot in a listing, start with that. I love, I love going and doing a search for huge lot of, and then I'm telling you people go and then they go to their category. So if you start off with setting the expectation that this is a lot of stuff, this is a great lot. This is more than one thing you've set the value. So huge lot of vintage sewing notions. Um, I think there's probably too many. I would pick the most valuable of those things in there to put in the title um, and then find the generic word for all the rest. So notions, uh, what else is another word that they could be using instead of notions? Is it um, accessories, supplies might be an, an important word to to switch out for. So do a little research on that. Um, Twenty three ninety nine seems reasonable with your free shipping in there. So, um, and again, I think this one's been listed a really, really long time. So I wouldn't just go in and retweak it. I would go and end it, sell similar, and put huge lot of um, vintage sewing notions, supplies, stuff. No, don't say stuff. I don't sew. I am. I am like the least domestic person on this planet, let me tell you. No sewing, no cooking, no house cleaning. You probably don't want to visit my house. No, I'm just kidding. I make somebody else do it. <laughs> yeah, my husband knew that going in. You know, I will muck a stall all day long and clean up after horses. But I, would, I, yeah, I hate house cleaning. Hate it. All right. We got some hot sales this week. Oh my gosh, we've got a fun one. Oh, this is where we just we are just gonna start off with this one because you guys are gonna go, what the heck? Um <laughs> this is item number three eight one three zero two five five one four three one. It it's suntan lotion. I don't get it. I don't I don't get it. I don't understand. But it goes to my whole theory that there are people with more money than sense and they will spend it on your stuff. <laughs> Vintage Sea and Ski Suntan Lotion. Four ounces, mind you, which is not very much. Do you see this? Do you see this price? $180 for one bottle of suntan lotion. <laughs> Holy smokes. What are people thinking? thinking is there nothing better on the market like this is you can't find this anymore they don't make it anymore could there be a reason i don't know yeah well maybe it's that little sentimental oh we used that on our trip to hawaii when we were celebrating our 25th anniversary and i just want that little green bottle on the shelf just saying 
Let's see. How did she know to buy these? So this is from Ann. Oh, gosh, Ann. I, Ann Z. I am not going to attempt your last name because I will just screw it up. Found three unopened bottles of the Sea and Ski Suntan Lotion last week at a flea market. Oh, anybody want to guess what she paid for it? One dollar. One dollar each. So she sold this first fund for one for 180 Listed number two today and will list number three the following week. How how cool. I, hey, Anne, let us know how the uh, other two do as well. I want to see if this... I mean, there's 16 bids on this for crying out loud. They're, they're going to sell. That's just crazy. That's just crazy. So, yeah, you guys, watch out. Sienski suntan lotion. Jeez. <laughs> Who'd have thunk? All right. This one is from Joe Ansack. I think that's how you say your name, Joe. Joe, are you in the uh, chat? I can't remember if I saw you in the chat. Uh, this is a 1930s vintage Venetian chandelier. Uh, item number 12161569-0482. And let's see. He paid $35 at a local estate sale. Uh, uh, auction. Auction. Had this thing priced so so many ways since February. Went to the More Fun, Bigger Profits event in Vegas in May. Yes, got to meet Joe. Um, brought up this listing as an example there, and I told him to raise that sucker to $399, which I pretty much think is a quote. Um, when he got back home, he changed the background of the pics since the original background was white. Sold it last week with a best offer of $300. Shoo -shoo. Yep. And he says, thanks, Danny, for the inspiration to start setting those prices higher and the focusing on niching. Folks, it works. It does work. It does work. Um, yeah, these Venetian, because this is, again, why did they buy? We'll kind of go back to that. The buyer of this at that price range is probably decorating and they don't want a $20 chandelier or even a $100 chandelier. They want to be able to brag that they have a $300 chandelier, right? They got money to spend. They want it. They want it because it looks good. There's cheaper ones out there. I'll tell you right now, there's cheaper ones out there. There are people who do not want the cheaper one. They want the more expensive one. And that's who you want as your customer. If you are selling this kind of stuff for sure. Way to go, Joe. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, this this is another one. Some of these you just got to go, I love it. These people out here have money. This is from uh, Carol Sanderson Hearn. I thought I saw Carol in our chat. Carol, did I see you in the chat? Uh, this is a puzzle. Item number 17183723456. She got a little bit of a backstory here. She bought, she actually bought a large number of unopened jigsaw puzzles from the estate of a neighbor for an average of about one dollar each. Yeah, you can get puzzles all the time for cheap. And uh, she's did, she's done extremely well selling those. She put off listing this biggest one. Okay, is this seriously over thirteen thousand pieces? Who is doing a puzzle like that? That's like a two-year project. Oh, wow. 13. I didn't even know they made puzzles that big. Apparently, they do. And she listed this one for $245 with best offer. Almost immediately, someone offered $145. Immediately. We're going to get back to that in a second. Remember that word. Uh, she countered at $199, and they turned it down. Before she saw the email saying the best offer counter had been turned down, guess what happened? Somebody else swooped in and paid full price. <laughs> Haven't I told you guys that's how it works, especially with something that's really desirable and people might have been, you know, looking for it, have it on their safe search. What happens, your best offer comes in and immediately is a good clue that probably somebody's trying to kind of like steal it from you. Um, don't be too anxious to take it. Don't be too anxious to take it because now you, you have the new listing boost, which is about the best as you can get. 
And then it gets engagement, which is somebody clicking over, making an offer. You can be sure that listing is going in front of anybody who is looking for a Clementoni jigsaw puzzle or um, a nude, all these great words that are in here. They just got notice of this listing and boom, you're going to get the right buyer. So that's 245 for a puzzle. Does that just boggle your mind, you guys? I'm telling you, there are people out there spending money. They're spending money. All right. Good job, you guys. Keep them coming in over on the Danny App Facebook group. We run a thread on this every single Sunday. I mean, there's like there's more than these three. Believe me, go over, check them out. It it will just blow your mind at the stuff that's selling. All right. Who wants to see what I shopped for this week? Dun, 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 dun. What did it Danny buy? Got to have a little jingle in here, right? There we go. Yeah. Cha-cha. All right. So we did the little video thing again. So let's uh, see how that turned out. Did we? Yes. I tried to do little pieces and you can fine tune it this time. So again, savers. My favorites are, oh, we stop right there. So now you see this little hippo caught my eye. Now it doesn't look like anything all that spectacular, does he? But he turns out to be a very uh, a vintage little hippo. And anything unusual that's, you know, not your normal, like, you know, teddy bears and, you know, the more common. Hippos are not that common to find out there. And there are hippo collectors. So I did pick this little guy up for a buck ninety nine, And he's sitting down at the antique booth for $29. Yeah. yeah. Oh, close up. There we go. Whoa. Zoom feature. So the shelves were a little sparse. Didn't find. Stop right there. Oh my gosh, you guys don't. I'm this. This is this is a Danny fail. I have. I didn't buy this one because I have twelve of these sitting down at the antique mall that are also listed. Or maybe I took them down. They were listed on eBay. These things don't sell. I'm talking about that thing right there. There is desk sitter. They come in all different ones, and they look like they'd be really cool and sellable, and they're not. They're not. They are duds, 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 duds. They go right there with those um, Mexican paper mache sculpture figures, you know, that, that go, they go in the dud pile. So, no, I did not pick that up. I looked at that plate down there on the bottom. Very colorful, um, but hassle factor. This is like a platter size charger, and the shipping on this was going to be so pain in the butt, the price wasn't going to be there to to pick it up, even though I could probably get a really good price for it. So passed on that. I don't think, oh, I did buy that. I bought that, the whole little Maxine boot. You'll see it in a minute in another picture. Oh, blackout. Oh, no, he's, he's going. Oh, stop right there. So... This little grouping right here was like just sitting here calling my name. So this is a little, um, a lucite paperweight with little floating shells in it. That went down to the booth. It's priced at 19 bucks, paid a dollar for it. The other is a soapstone carving that's actually on eBay right now. If you, if you look at my store, I put it at auction because it's got a little damage. Anything I get that's got a little damage, I put it at auction. But the reason I got this is because I've got another really cool soapstone uh, carving that's currently at auction and getting some action. So I wanted to pull some more soapstone collectors in. So this is a little loss leader. I won't I won't lose money. I've got it starting at nine ninety five, and if it were perfect, it would be in the thirty thirty five dollar range. Get that that little igloo right there. And then the thing behind it is actually this really cool stained glass and metal uh, sculpture thing highlighting somebody's 1947 birthday. And there's tons of detail. It's got like a little um, uh, poly grip box and some extra fiber B vitamin things. I mean, tons of little detail and it's really well done. I just listed that today. In fact, um, I put 60 bucks on it and I paid five for it. So that'll sell. I'm not even worried about that one. That one's going to sell. That one's going to sell. So yeah, see close up. Say, hey, I got the zoom going. 
<laughs> oh, got Scott excited. He's like pushing buttons over there. Yeah, so. uh, and there should be a picture that shows what actually ended up in my cart. Do we have that? There we go. That was my cart. These are wall pockets. Wall pockets are, uh, there's vintage ones, there's newer ones, but they they actually have like a little vase part on them and they hang on the wall. Wall pockets, great keywords. This little bird right here, I've got that listed. I thought it was made of canceled stamps. Got home, realized it was just paper. It's still really cute. Um, so I listed it. This is all Blue Ridge pottery. Blue, tons of Blue Ridge pottery. It was scattered throughout the dishes section. I pulled every piece. It was priced at like 99 cents to a buck 99 a piece. Very, very collectible. Like I showed you, got the Maxine little shoe boot. I'm not exactly sure what it's for, but anything Maxine is pretty golden. A um, couple mugs, got some cool chickens. These actually have little colored marbles in them. And then you put the candle in there, the little tea light candle, and, the, and it, it's sparkly. Um, so those went down to the booth. I'm not listing those. Let's see. Oh, I don't know if you can see way up here in the corner, this super cool fish. It's a, it's a blue tang, which is a saltwater fish, and it hangs on the wall. This is man cave material all day long. Uh, so he came home with me, and he got listed. I think I have him at like 80 bucks, and I paid five. He was five. Um, so, yeah, that actually is all the goodies that came. And there's art under there that I couldn't quite get the picture of. But, yeah, you can imagine what's under there. It'll all be listed. It'll all be listed this week. So you can go over to Utterly Good Stuff and check it out. All right, the good, the bad, and the utterly. Okay, it's official. It is official. The date is set. July, I'm sorry, it's already happened. June 29th. No, I really should have somebody else do my notes. It's July 19th. I didn't change the date on my notes from last week. June 29th was when your seller update took place. July 19th is when eBay and PayPal are splitting up. The divorce will be, I don't know if the divorce will be final ever, uh, but that is when they are going their separate ways. It's going to get interesting. It's going to get interesting. I'm excited. I love it. I, You know what? It is time for a change. It is time for a change of the guard. I, I don't know if you know, uh, John Donahoe is on the board over at Nike. And I've been saying this for a long time. John, just do it. Go. I'm saying. Um, yeah, it is. It, it was. Yeah. I, I write my own jokes. Can you tell? No, really. I mean, it's just it was time for him to go. He, he seems to have lost sight of where this company needed to go. And I'm excited. Devin Wenning coming in. I know Devin good guy. I've gotten to talk to him. When he first came on board uh, as the president of eBay Marketplaces, uh, which is the one that you guys want to pay attention to. That's us, us little guys. Uh, I really, really liked what he stood for. I like his his forward thinking. Uh, it's going to be some work to get this company back together. I, I, I can tell you that um, but I have faith. I have faith. Devin's going to pull it together. I like him. He's a good guy. Um, let's see what happens, especially since Marketplaces is also splitting off from Enterprise. Enterprise, you guys, is that's the piece with all of those sellers that you've been complaining about. The big, you know, Chinese retail companies coming in and just... You can't, you can't compete with it. It's like huge. They get all the perks from eBay, right? They get all the extra search. I, I'm wondering how that's all going to work together because marketplaces and enterprises are now going to be competing for space in the search. So this could get good. This is going to get good. I like it. It's all, it's, this is good stuff, you guys. There ain't no fear here because it's only got one way to go. Yes. Um, it, 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 it has been a mess. It has been a mess for a few years now. So it is time for some good things to happen. Yes. Enterprise. That was, that was the big company. That's the big guys. That's the Walmart toys are us. Come on over, sell on eBay. Yeah. That's what's been hurting a lot of you guys, or you think has been hurting a lot of you guys. Um, you can still beat them because you 
get to change things on a dime. You get to do marketing right when it's needed. You don't have to go ask a board of directors if you can do something. So you've got advantages, big advantages. Now, Amazon, you know, it's a, yeah, the big guys are over on Amazon, too. And I suspect that they get the buy box, you know, more often than not. Um, but really, with only one page per item, there's so much unique stuff that they aren't dealing with because they can't. Either they can't uh, go and find the same sources for it at the price they want to pay. Because if they're competing on price, they've got to have some pretty good margins built in there so they can do that. You guys have a lot of advantages being a small seller. Uh, so, And you guys need to get your eBay stuff over on Amazon if even just as merchant fulfilled, I've shipped more Amazon stuff this week than I have eBay. It's been crazy, crazy. People are finding it. They're going. Um, real quick, speaking of Amazon, they are taking on Etsy. Oh, it's like this. Th I love how the media makes it all this doom and gloom for Etsy. It is not going to be doom and gloom for Etsy. Those are two completely different buyers. Yes, thank you. Etsy's going to be just fine because that is about a buyer who comes over there and wants that warm, fuzzy feeling of shopping from a from a artisan, from the from the crafter, from the designer. Uh, Amazon is just like big corporate, you know. They get the the slam dunk buyers. Like, tell me, you don't go over to Amazon. You put what you want in the search. You click it once. You know it's going to be at your door in two days, and that's why you're over there buying. That's not the handcrafted, touchy-feely buyer, right? So I don't think this is a big deal. I think this is going to end up being a flop for Amazon personally, but we'll see what happens. Let's see how it takes off. I mean, if you do the marketing right, you can make anything happen, right? So, And they got, they got the money to do it. Okay, so you guys get one last shot. Of getting an entry to win this book. And I'm telling you, you want this book. You want this book. This, if this was my only copy, I would not be offering this to you. Because <laughs> um, I'm kind of selfish that way. No, really, the, I got to see Dennis Snow uh, in person. And he was fascinating, fascinating stuff. And you can use this stuff, the stuff he talks about in this book, to make your business different than all the other sellers out there get out there get the sale when somebody else can't you want this book you know how you get this book write me a letter simple as that you can write niche to profit at vegasvideonetwork.com and you know what it say something nice say something mean uh, you know talk about all this crap on my desk give me a suggestion or Tell me about something that's happened in your business. Because little hint, this show is being seen by a lot of people. And if I happen to mention your store and what you sell, you just never know who's going to hear that and go buy something from you. Just saying. Just saying it has its perks in more ways than one. So we will read those. Those are going to get entered into a drawing for this book, which I will send to you. And uh, you can learn some stuff for your business. Or if you don't want the book, you probably want these. This, this is Danny Dollars. It comes in different currencies. And uh, I'll, I'll throw in uh, 50, 50 Danny Dollars. Now, if you don't know what Danny Dollars are good for, ha, huh, ask an appster who was at the More Fun, Bigger Profits conference how well they spend. I, hey, way better than the European market dollar right now where the, you know, the US dollar is like a dollar 12 right now. Hey, this $50 bill converts into about 500. I'm just saying. And there's proof of that. I'm not just making this stuff up, okay? Spends like real money with Danny. Okay. All right, guys. Head on over to iTunes. We are still holding on to new and noteworthy Thank you for everyone who's watching over there. I guess it's listening over there. No, I guess I can watch. I think they can watch over there now because iTunes is in this century. Yeah. Used to just be sound. What do I know? I am not techie, okay? I don't know these things. Anyway, iTunes, go give us a review. That's super cool when you do that. We love that. Uh, and you can watch, of course, on YouTube. 
I try to get these loaded up within a couple days, you know. Um, everything's on the YouTube channel, or you can go right here to the Vegas Video Network, rewatch it, watch some of their other shows. Roku. How many of you got Roku going? We got Stitcher. We got TuneIn. We got Apple TV. And what would I do if my my witty Whitney wasn't whispering in my ears and telling me all this stuff? God, love him. So, yeah, you guys spread the word around too, would you? Please, please, please. I know you guys don't want to fill up the chat too much because you are kind of a little selfish that way. No, I'm just kidding. Come on over. Invite your friends. The more the merrier. Bring a friend over to watch the show with you. Sit down. Pop some popcorn. We'll have some fun together. I will not be here next week, guys. I'm going to be in Miami on a secret mission, but I'll be back the week after that. See you then. Now go be profitable and make it fun.